I believe that you can do whatever God has put in your heart to do, but you gotta first get it in your mouth before you get it in your heart. If you can get it in your mouth, you can get it in your heart. So whatever you put in your mouth is gonna get into your heart. So stop saying, I can't believe that, or I can't do that, and start saying, I can do that. I can't afford that. I can't experience that. I can't get the breakthrough like that. I can't rise up. Come on, church, start saying it. Start saying it. Start saying it. That's how faith comes. Come on, Woo. Welcome everybody. I'm Pastor Jack Holt, my wife here, Joyce, and we are so excited to be able to minister to you today a wonderful message on Believe You Can. You know, oftentimes we just won't believe that we can do the things that God wants us to do. But if you can believe that you can do it, there's nothing that's impossible for you. Well, the thing that helps me is knowing that, you know, I'm not alone. You know, I, I have the Holy Spirit in me to give me the strength to give me the wisdom on how to do something. And when you know that um, there, there's, there's a, a force behind you and God has told you to Amen. do something, then you will get the victory. So we're gonna go right into the service and let the Lord bless you. This morning, I'm going to be ministering to you on the topic, Believe You Can. It's a challenge for a pastor because if I can get you to believe you can, do God's will, then whatever's trying to stop you, you're going to be able to bulldoze right through it. I want you to turn to somebody right now and tell them, believe you can. Now to turn to somebody that you're not too sure about and say, believe you can. <laughs> Amen. I love what Jesus said. He said, all things are possible for the one who believes, which means when you believe you can, you believe that it is always possible for you to get a breakthrough in your life. It's always possible to go to the another level. It's always possible to draw nearer to Christ. It's always possible to remove the mountains in your life. But if you don't believe you can, then there's many things in your life that are impossible. It's impossible to get a deeper relationship with, your, with the Lord, or it's impossible to get a deeper relationship with your spouse. And so as we look at this, I want you to understand that if you believe you can, there's virtually nothing that you can't achieve and accomplish in God. But as long as you keep saying, I can't believe or I can't do this, you're going to miss out on what God has for you. And I'm going to show you a, a miracle that Jesus did that really paints this picture and shows you the power of God. Now, before we read the verses... This is a miracle, a very unusual miracle that we see Jesus did. It's a miracle where Jesus heals a man that was blind from birth. Now, there is no reference in the New Testament of Jesus ever healing someone that was blind from birth with the exception of this man. In other words, all the ministry that Jesus had done to disciples, there had never been someone that was born blind that was healed. So that's unique about this miracle. The other thing is, out of all the miracles that Jesus did, most of the people came to Jesus in faith requiring a miracle from the anointing that he had. But in this case, this man was not even looking for a miracle. God's sovereignty moved on him and he set in motion a miracle because he was in a place where he didn't really believe that his life could change. But Jesus helps him. Amen? So with that in mind, look here in John chapter 1. It says this. Now Jesus passed by and he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day, the night cometh, when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. He anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay 
And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Shalom, which, which translated means sent. So he went and he washed and he came back seen. I want to stop with that. I want you to see this miracle because this is very important. Many times people don't believe they can do certain things because of what people have said to them in the past. People have basically said you're this way because your parents sinned. Well, you can't do a whole lot about your parents' sin. And the Jewish people believe that a, a baby inside of the mother womb could sin. Well, you can't do a whole lot about that. So he was in this state, and he had never seen anybody in his condition healed by Jesus. So Jesus, what he's doing is removing what prevents a person from believing they can. And I love this story because he just simply uh, anoints his eye and says, I want you to go wash in the pool, and he obeys. He didn't stop off at another pool. He went all the way to the pool of Shalom, washed, and he came out seeing. It's a wonderful miracle, but it shows you that many times we believe we can't because of our past. Now, don't shout me down when I'm preaching right now because I want you to see this. Many of you believe you can't because of something that happened to you in the past. I see this in relationships all the time where a husband, he says, well, I, I, you know, this is just the way I was raised and, and this happened to me when I was younger. That's why I'm this way. And it's causing conflicts in the marriage because they don't believe they can change or the wife, she's insecure or whatever. And she says, well, I was molested when I was a child and, or younger. And that's why I'm the way I am. And I, I just can't help myself but be afraid of this and that, and it causes problems in the marriage. And it's all because they believe in something that happened in the past that left emotional scars in their mind that they keep going back to that stops them from believing they can. And I know you suffered. I know you've went through some things, but I want you to believe this, that if you believe on the word of God, you, don't let the past stop you. Let the word of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit, minister to you now. <clears throat> don't allow that past to do that. And it's so easy sometimes that we do that. Uh, many children never go any farther than their parents went because they don't believe they can because they follow the example of their parents. But I'm here to tell you, and my mission is to tell you to believe you can. You can change. You can go to the next level. You can remove the mountain in your life. You can believe God that there'll be no more oppression, no more depression. Come on, you, I believe you can. And so that's, that's my mission this morning, is to get you to that place where you can. Now, I need to say something at this point because what I'm about ready to share with you is thinking that people have that prevents them believing they can. And a lot of it comes from religion, which when I say that, I say it in a negative way, traditions of men. Not necessarily Bible, but traditions that people think the Bible says. How many have ever heard this? That when you go through a trial, even though something may change, the trial itself brings out your character, brings out the you know good things in your life. So I know you've suffered, but... It's brought out some great things in your life. I want to tell you that is a lie. The only time a trial brings out character in your life is when you believe you can overcome the trial. If you don't believe you can overcome the trial, it doesn't bring out nothing but turn you into a character. It doesn't give you character. It turns you into a character. But if you believe, yes, Lord, I believe that you're going to help me through this problem. I believe in that you're going to restore this. I believe you're going to do that. Then it develops character. He develops character through his power delivering us. Not through us going through the trial by itself, but by believing that God is bigger than the mountain that you face, bigger than the fear that you face. That's how it, it develops. God is not glorified when you're broke all the time. He's not glorified when we're sick all the time. 
But he is glorified the moment the healing comes forth in your life. And all of a sudden, you can dance where you couldn't dance before. All of a sudden, you feel a, a, a healing in your body. All of a sudden, you feel the mountain start to wither away. That's when God is glorified. He's glorified when his power helps you win in your life. He's glorified because you're going to go to the other side. He's not glorified because you're the same as you were before. You're, he's glorified because his power defeated the devil and not glory. Woo. I can't help. That gets me a little excited. So that's why I want you to believe you can because God's power won't deliver you unless you believe you can. If you don't believe he can heal you of your disease, then he won't heal you of your disease. If you don't believe that he can change your marriage, your marriage won't change. But if you believe he can... God's glory will, in fact, be displayed in your life. One of my favorite verses is found in, in Hebrews eleven six. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For you must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I'm going to tell you right up front, this is what you have to do you got to believe that God is a rewarder of those who use their faith. you got to believe that if you use your faith, God will reward you. If you don't believe that God will, doesn't reward you when you use your faith, you can't be pleasing to God. God is not pleased when you don't believe for a breakthrough. He's not pleased when you don't believe for healing. He's not pleased when you don't believe that God will take you to another level financially in your life. He's not pleased until you believe. Let me show you a verse. Over in the book of Hebrews, listen to this. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now, with whom was he angry or displeased? Forty years. Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? Why was he mad at them for 40 years? Because this group of people wouldn't believe that God could take them into a land of more than enough with plenty left over. They didn't believe that God could give them wells that they did not dig, houses they did not build, vineyards and towns that they had not built. They didn't believe in El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. They didn't believe that. And it says that God was displeased with them. I want, to, I want God to be pleased with me. Now, I'm going to tell you something that I've always done since I got saved. I'm always believing God for what is not yet seen in my life. I'm always believing for more of what he's promised that I'm not experiencing right now. I mean, I'm always believing for souls to be saved, but even more souls to be saved, even more lives to be changed. I'm always believing for what I have not yet seen. A lot of people rest in the present manifestations of what God has given them. Never rest. I always tell people that are retiring, don't retire, refire. You can do whatever you want to do, and that's great for retirement, but make sure you refire your motor, praise God. Make sure you start believing even more than you believe before. Start believing for even a better marriage than what you already have. Start believing. Come on, man. Keep believing for more. <laughs> to me, it is, is a blessing, and it's something that I've always done. I, uh, there's just something about... Believing God for what you do not yet see in your life. Because he once you see it, it's no longer faith. Faith is the substance of things not seen. So if you get the better job, hey, use your faith for a better job. If you, if you get some increase, believe God for more increase. In other words, don't stop at whatever God has given you. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep believing for my loved ones, 
people in church that are struggling with things. You always should be in that place where you're believing for what you don't yet have in manifestation. Faith won't grow if it's all based on what you can see yourself right now possessing. It grows when you see yourself in your heart, in your mind, possessing things that do not yet literally manifested in your life right now. Say this with me. Jesus, I'm believing for manifestation. I'm believing for things I do not yet see. And I lay hold of it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, everybody. Give him praise. Give him praise. Whew. Psalms 107 verse 20 says this. It says that God sent his word and delivered them from all their destructions. I want you to see what he says. I've sent my word so that whatever is trying to destroy you, you can believe my word and you can be delivered. So whenever you're facing something that's destroying you, whether uh, marriage problems, whether financial problems, whether health issues, you got to go to the word and find out what his word says because God's word will deliver you from all your destructions. But that means you have to believe it. If you don't believe it, it won't work in your life. Here's one of the things that people do. A lot of people don't know the difference between faith and faith in what you don't want. You see this with end time teaching. Oh, the Antichrist, he's already in the world. He's going to be manifesting here pretty soon. I want to tell you something. It's not faith unless you believe in God's deliverance. It's not faith. In other words, people go, well, the end times are coming. It's going to go from bad to worse to terrible. That's not faith. It's faith when you realize that God will protect you in every situation that we have to face in life, whether you're pre-trib, post-trib, you got to believe that. I believe this. I believe that the best is yet to come for the church. That's what I believe. Noah, when he began to believe God, God said, I'm going to destroy the earth with a flood. He'd never even seen a flood. He didn't even have any fear of a flood. You can't have a fear of something you've never seen destroy anything. So when he was preaching about God's judgment coming, he wasn't doing it out of fear. He was telling people there's deliverance if you turn to God. If you turn to God, there's deliverance, just like I'm going to receive deliverance. Same with Lot. He knew that fire and brimstone was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, but he also knew that God was going to rescue him out of that. See, it's not faith if it's faith in your fears. It's faith in what you've hoped for. It's not faith in what you don't hope for. It's not faith in what you don't want. It's, it's not faith. Come on. It's faith in what you hope for, that God will spare me, that God will deliver my family, that God will come through and bless me, that God will bring me to another level. Come on, praise God. That's what it is. And it seems like we're in this culture where just everything is negative. Everything is hopeless. Is not hopeless. I said it's not hopeless. I'm going to give you some keys to make this work, okay? Write this down. Psalm, or excuse me, Deuteronomy 29, 29 says the secret things belong to the Lord and those things that are revealed to us belong to us and our Children, say it with me, and our children. You're the children. Everything that was spoken to Moses, Aaron, David, the prophets, all of it was for you. It wasn't just for them. He didn't just do it for them. He did it for you. Abraham, when God said, lift up your eyes and see, and God told him, if you can see your descendants as the stars of the sky, or if you can see yourself possessing the land, whatever you see, I'll give you. That wasn't just for them. It's for us. I can see the multitudes being saved. Come on. I can see God giving us all that we need. I can, come on, come on, church. It's for us. How many of you ever believed for something that was difficult? I remember I was at the Puyallup Fair with a friend of mine. And he says, do you want to go bungee jumping? My first, first excuse was this. Well, I don't want to pay that kind of money. It costs like 100 bucks. I don't want to do it. He says, well, I'll pay for it. 
Excuse number one is God. And I'm a pastor, right? God did not give us a, sp a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So I got rid of all the excuses, said, all right, let's go. And there I go. Whew. I was only in the chiropractor for one year afterwards. But it was a great experience because I believe I can do it. Amen? I believe I can swim with the sharkies. I believe that. I believe that you can do whatever God has put in your heart to do, but you've got to first get it in your mouth before you get it in your heart. If you can get it in your mouth, you can get it in your heart. So whatever you put in your mouth is going to get into your heart. So stop saying, I can't believe that, or I can't do that, and start saying, I can do that. I can't afford that. I can't experience that. I can't get the breakthrough like that. I can't rise up. Come on, church. Start saying it. Start saying it. Start saying it. That's how faith comes Come on, Woo. and God wants to do that for every one of us but many times we don't simply because we don't realize that the way you talk is the way you possess I love the teaching that Jesus said it's one of my favorite teachings I do in the church and that is Mark eleven twenty three 23 and 24 when Jesus said, whosoever, which is all of us, say unto this mountain, be plucked up and cast the sea and doubt in his heart, but believe the words he says, you can have whatever you say. Think about that. If you don't doubt what you can say, you can have exactly what you say. Amen. Oh, I don't know about that, Pastor. Well, you don't know the word. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? What did she say? If I just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Touched her, she gets healed. And we know she was speaking in faith because Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. She got exactly what she said. I don't know about you, but this is my whole Christian life. Using faith to get what I know is God's will in my life. Oh, I don't know about that stuff, Pastor. You know, I tried confessing this and it didn't happen in my life. Listen to what you just said. You said that you had confessed it and it didn't work. It didn't say that it would work if you confessed it didn't work. It said if you confess and believe it does work, it would work. Quit having this fast food mentality when it comes to faith. Some things take months. Some take, if we don't get it by the evening, we want to give up. You stand in faith for as long as it takes. If it takes 30 years, do it 30 years. If it, come on, if it takes a lifetime, keep your confession of faith up. Hallelujah. And when you do that, God will open your heart and he'll begin to move in your life in a great way. But you can have exactly what you say. Exactly what you say. Oh, I don't believe I can do better than I'm doing right now. You get exactly what you say. There's not a person here that can't go to another level financially in your life. There isn't a person here who can't go to a higher level financially. Are you listening to me? You can get whatever you say. Quit saying what you don't want. Start saying what you do want. Start saying, I'm going to do better. Start saying, I'm going to overcome this. Start saying, this is not going to be a problem. Start saying, it's not going to always be like this. Start saying, God has given me more than enough. God's going to bring me over to the next place and the next place and the next breakthrough. <laughs> Woo, I love that. I love that. So these are the tools in which we have. Now, some people, what they do is they, they won't believe they can because they're looking for more understanding. If I could just get a little bit more understanding in it, I would do it. Listen, I, I believe we should search scriptures and get a more understanding. But I don't need to have complete understanding to do what God's revealed to us in scripture. Just like I don't need to understand how a jet motor works on an airplane. 
I know enough that I can get a ticket and get on the airplane. God's given us enough. Even though we're growing spiritually, Paul said, I only know in part. Now, if he wrote third of the New Testament, then what makes you think you get, get better than he did? Just act on what you do know, and it'll be enough to give you your miracle. You know, I just love this concept, believe you can, believe you can. I love what Paul said. I can do all things through Christ, not, not just by your own ability, but through that anointing in your life. You can break barriers. You can become what God wants you to become, and you can flow in what he wants you to have. You can. I mean, we just have to have faith in God and trust that his word is true, and he wants us to succeed. He wants us to be a blessing to others. You know, he's left us here on this planet Earth for a reason, and, and that's to be a witness for him, to, to gather more people Amen. into the kingdom of God. And, you know, when, when you're feeling despondent or if you're feeling like you're worthless or you can't do anything right, you know, that's, that's Satan's playground. So let's get out of that. Let's believe who, who we are in Christ, and let's believe that we can do what God has told us to do. Listen, we love you guys so much, and we'll see you next week at the river. Wherever you're watching from, we want to thank you for tuning in with us today. We pray that you've heard God speaking to you through this message from Pastor Jack. For more incredible messages like this, we encourage you to either watch these videos here or head over to our channel. And don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell so you're always in the know on new videos. We also have more on the River social media platform. So follow us there too, and we hope to see you again soon.